what you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. Weatherman Phil Connors is spending the day in Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. Phil? Ned! Ned Ryerson, I did the whistling belly button trick at the high school talent show. Bing! Bing! But Phil's about to find out. He's not just stuck in Puxatawney. Will you be checking out today, Mr. Connors? Chance of departure today, 100%. He's stuck. Groundhog Day. I'm reliving the same day over and over. Bill? Ned Ryerson? Bang! Do you ever have deja vu, Mrs. Lancaster? I don't think so, but I could check with the kitchen. Well, it's Groundhog Day. Again? At first, he was a little anxious. Bill? What? Will you be checking out today, Mr. Connors? I'd say the chance of departure is 80%. But now... We could do whatever we want. <laughs> He's discovering the possibilities. Don't you worry about cholesterol? Why? And living life mm. like there's Phil? no tomorrow. Phil Connors! Ned! Because there isn't. I am an immortal. I have been stabbed, shot, burned, frozen, electrocuted. I'm a god. You're a god. I'm a god. I'm not the god. He's out of his gourd. But to get what his heart wants most... What are you looking for, Phil? A date for the weekend? ...means living this day over again, <laughs> till he gets it right. Believe it or not, I studied 19th century French poetry. <laughs> what a waste of time. I studied 19th century French poetry. La fille qui j'aimera. You speak French. Oui. Bill Murray. Andy McDowell. To the Groundhog. I always drink to world peace. What should we drink to? I like to say a prayer and drink to world peace. Don't drive angry. Don't drive angry. He might be okay. Yes! Life has a funny way of repeating itself. What did you do today? Oh, same old, same old. To everyone out there in the decoding world my name is logan and this is decode your reality and today we're going to be breaking down and decoding the 1993 absolute masterpiece of a movie titled groundhog day starring bill murray and folks you know i just came out with they live and i had said that that was by far out of the almost decade of research i've been doing that was like the pinnacle 
of decodes, but this one right here may have completely knocked They Live Decoded off the mountain and taken over the top dog spot because what I'm about to show you will not only put things into perspective, but it will once again support the fact that man's being used and it is whatever created this reality, it seems that it likes to come down here and experience this game called life. And I really don't know how else to tell all of you that, but when I show you all these things, it'll be put into perspective. And then of course you be the judge. And I always ask what you see. And I'm going to ask that at the very end, like I always do. So I'm going to suggest to get comfortable. This is going to be a lengthy decode, put on a pair of headphones. If you can block out the outside world, really get immersed folks. The information that I'm about to show you is absolutely groundbreaking. I promise you that you've never seen this information before. It will put so many things into perspective for many of you that are seeking this Gnostic knowledge. So here we go, folks. Here are the topics of conversation during this presentation in the zero position. Always want to include the zero, the intro, and I have a little bit <clears throat> of the intro with the actual movie. And wait, do you see this? It's just amazing. The first topic we'll be getting into is duality, of course, reliving out duality as phil was living out number two we're going to get into cherry street which is the airbnb or the bread and breakfast that phil connor stayed at that he kept waking up from 5 59 to 6 a.m in the number three position the frozen fool we're bringing some tarot into this folks number four the song that kept playing over and over once that alarm clock went off i got you babe I got you, babe. And it's just funny bringing these people that have nothing to do with anyway, folks. Number five, Bill meets Lucifer. That's right. Bill Murray is going to meet Lucifer. He's going to be playing a major role in all of this. Number six, Punks and Tawny Phil, the groundhog. There really is a day. Punks and Tawny Phil and Phil is the groundhog. And there really is a day on February 2nd in Pennsylvania that takes place every single year. So now we have to bring that into this to add another layer to this decode number seven we're going to get into the beast what does the beast have to do with groundhog day well you're about to find out we're of course going to include the creators the producer the writer of this movie wait till you see these guys it's just wow and then of course number nine what did you see during this presentation I always love to hear folks just it's going to be so much fun to have fun with this because i had a lot of fun decoding it man and i could have added so much more but you know i want to keep these at least an hour hour and a half because the attention span of most people is doesn't go beyond that there's so many great pieces of information if you make it all the way to the end of this folks congratulations you will get more keys to your kingdom. So the intro and the starting point was what this kind of movie revolves all around. And it is the time of 5.59 to 6.00 or 6 a.m. And that's the time the alarm clock goes off. And you know the rest of the story if, if you've seen this movie. I hope, I'm sure you have if you're watching this decode. But of course, when you add the elements of the periodic table into your decodes, you're going to get a lot of truths. These elements are a lot of them are in our bodies. We're made up a lot of these elements and they have little pictures next to them and people who discover them and those things can be decoded. But this is what the 559 means through the layers of science, the elements of the periodic table. And I need each and every one of you to really understand or understand that, you know, the number five is the busiest number out of all the numbers and it sits in the very dead center of your calculator or your dial pad of your phone. If you were to place a pyramid over the top of that, you would get the pinnacle or the apex of the pyramid in the number five position. That's why if you've seen the Umbrella Academy, you know, the teleportation character was number five, who was the stone cold killer. There's a lot of fives. If you pay attention, five is the hero fin. five is nickel, you know, the five cent piece you play with that you spend money with. The five is very important. Five means man. We are the five. And notice that the, the, uh, the weight of boron is uh, the most abundant anyway, is 11.009. 
the, nine, the mirror of the 9-11. 11, of course, is tied to sodium. We're going to be getting into that, the salt of the earth. And then the 59 is the element prosiodymium. Prosiodymium. And it's the 59th element, and the atomic weight of that is 140.908. And this element means green twin. The picture of it is right here. This is what the Royal Society of Chemistry, they use pictures for all their elements. So this is the little icon they used for this element. And it means green twin. Think about that for a second. And I have a feeling that indicates the Jesus and Lucifer energy because they're, you know, Jesus and Thomas actually. And Thomas, of course, is, is the guy who plays Lucifer in the show from Netflix, Thomas John Ellis, Thomas and Jesus, Jesus and Thomas, the two twins. And this element means the two twins. When you go to the Royal Society of Chemistry and you look at this element, it's right there. It means green twin. And you know what you need to really really, really download in your minds, folks, is the color that the eyes see first, because we're talking about the color spectrum, because we are humans, we're light being slowed down into physical matter. It's yellow slash green. I mean, it does say yellow here, but nonetheless, if you go to the chakras and you look, it's between the yellow and the green. And that's exactly what this color is right here. It's this yellow slash green, and this is representing your solar plexus chakra and the heart chakra. And when light goes in, it either goes up or down. And if when it goes down to the lower chakras, you're going to get into the red, yellow, and orange. And then, of course, red denotes hell, which is where we're in. So that's kind of what this means right here, folks. And you can, you can do the alchemy of these it goes so deep, but I have so many slides to show you. I didn't want to spend so much time, but then he goes to six o'clock and this is when he gets the wake up and then he starts his day. But the six really is an indication of becoming carbon from light into carbon from light in the dream state. Cause he's sleeping the green twin. And then he ends up waking up, wake up. And he wakes up at 6 a.m. and we become carbon. Notice carbon's the king of all elements. Six proton. You guys know it's the 666 element. The 12 is the most abundant way. And of course, if you look in the tarot, what's the 12 card? It's the hangman, of course, because we get hung upside down in Wonderland, which is hell. That's what we're all living in right now. And notice that it's, I mean, this tells the story right there. Carbon is 20 and duality. Is, I mean, what are the odds? What do you think the odds would be, folks? You're going to notice throughout this presentation, I'm primarily just using one numerology cipher. That is it. I, I don't have the luxury of using four or five or six to connect the dots. It makes it easier that way to do that. I'm, you're you're going to see I'm only going to be using one. That's it to tell this story of how this reality works. There it is. So he goes from light, the dream state, into waking up and becoming carbon, becoming man, waking up in duality. And this is where I know man could never code at this level. Now, I know man can consciously use certain things in movies, and they do. Once you become conscious of the code, of course, you can like, oh, I'm going to do like I was born on the fourth. So my power days are the, on the fourth, the fourth, the seventh, the first. You know, if you're born in the second, it would be the 11th. It would be the, um, the 20th and so on, you know, but you can consciously code things when you're aware of the code. But what I'm about to show you folks, I just feel that man could never code at this level because now you're talking about taking a movie and timestamps. And I showed this in, they live and the timestamps and just, it just, to me, it would be not possible not possible to get the movie integrated with what I'm about to show you. During this movie, there are 10 different scenes to where Bill Murray wakes up and here, you know, here's kind of the first time that he's staying in this bed and breakfast and there it is. And the clock changes to 6 AM. And this is the very first time that Bill Murray wakes up and starts his venture into Groundhog Day. And of course, this is the very, very first day. So he doesn't understand that he's going to repeat this over and over. But in this movie, he does it 
and I went through this movie, it happens, t they show the clock 10 different times. Now, it obviously happens more than that. We're going to get into that. But it shows it 10 different times. And why the 10? Well, you know, when you go over here to numerology, keep your eye on the Chaldean, it's because it's man. Man is 10. The binary system in compute, quantum computers, and com it's 10. And 10 is the male and female. 10 is the related to the yod it's the 10th letter in the in the hebrew alphabet the 10th letter in the english is the letter j that's where the word jehovah come from that's the new age name yahweh became jehovah but nonetheless it's the divine becoming man 10 times this happens this is the first time and here it is this is the actual time stamp of the very first time that alarm clock changes from 5:59 to 6 a.m. Seven minutes and 32 seconds is when it is at 559 and then it changes to 6 a.m. and then one second goes off and it's seven minutes and 33 seconds. And if, you know, seven of course is the rainbow and 33 is ascension and 32 means hell, 32 and we're going to get into that the 33 and the 32 obviously 33 degrees water becomes liquid at 32 it becomes a solid and that's what this whole entire world is revolving around 33 and 32 32 and 33 and this is the first time stamp of when this clock changes so i went ahead and i checked the second time that it happens and i measured it so the second time that they show this alarm clock is at 18 minutes and 19 seconds. And then, of course, it's going to do one second and it's going to change to 18 seconds, 18 minutes and 20 seconds. So then I measured that using timeanddate.com and I plugged in the parameters. This was the first timestamp of when the clock changed over to 6 a.m., seven minutes and 33 seconds and then from the second time they showed the alarm clock it was 18 minutes and 19 seconds which is right here and the time difference between these two scenes was of course 10 minutes meaning man and it's this one is this is 559 it's at 46 seconds and then, of course, it changes from 1819, 559, to 1820, and once again becoming carbon, 6. So we get 46 seconds, 10 minutes and 46 seconds, and then we get 10 minutes and 47 seconds. But really, the clues are the 47 and the 46. And those numbers are very special because when you look at the biblical tree of life the story of that now the original spelling of the word tree of life just life now not including tree that we're going to be showing that a little bit later on but the rendition of life is 46 the tree of knowledge is 47 i've shown this before and when you look in the string of pi look at where the numbers are found folks it's just off by one digit. 46 is found at the 19th decimal digit, 19 and 20, which is 39, which is time travel. And then the 47 is the 119 and the 120. But look at look at the look at the sinks on that right there, folks. There are no accidents. And and this is what I feel is going on is the green twins. Jesus and Thomas, Jesus and Lucifer, and then the tetragrammaton, the box that you get stuck in by biting the apple and uh, wanting to know the knowledge. Coming down here in hell, you don't have a choice. You did it anyway. Can't figure that part out because we don't know what's beyond this state of mind. So folks, can you see what I'm saying is that these, these scenes in the movie, the timestamps that they're at, they lead to the tree of life and the tree and all. This is just one. I could have done all 10 of them and shown you more, but folks, I, I have so many slides to show you. But this was just one example. Wait till I show you some more stuff that's going to blow you away. But folks, there is 46 and 47 on the timestamp of that alarm clock going from 5.59 to 6 a.m. to wake him up. And those that is the first time he discovers and realizes that his life is completely upended. In this scene right here at 18 minutes, he realizes that, wait a minute, 
something's going on, something's screwy here. I'm redoing the same day over as I just did yesterday. This is day number two right here. So it goes from one to two and it's the tree of life and the tree of knowledge according to the timestamps. Now, do you realize as a producer, what would have to go into to get that exactly the way it is? And are they doing that at a conscious level with the timestamps? I don't feel personally that mankind is getting at a level of coding this way. Now, keep in mind, well, I'm gonna keep going with this folks. Here's another scene of him on the third time that he's, now this is the scene right here where he knows this is going into day number three. He realizes that he repeated day number two over already and he's already getting frustrated and he's like really kind of getting worried. And he's like, how's this possible? You can imagine what would be going through your mind when you just went through the, uh, the same day over for the second time. And now you're about ready to go to bed and you're wondering, am I gonna wake up and everything gonna be normal? So of course, in this scene, he takes a pencil and he breaks it in half and he puts it up on the table. And this is the timestamp of when this scene happens. 4.04 a.m., obviously. And that 404 in the string of pi is found at the 57, or 57 appears at the 404th decimal digit of pi. And, you know, that's tied to this movie right there called The True. You've seen that movie. If you haven't seen my decode on that, please check it out. But it's all about living inside of hell, living inside of something being controlling over you. The words stairway to heaven equals the number 57 as well. And 57, of course, is tied to this element right here, Lanthanum, which means to lie hidden. That's tied to Yaldabaoth. And then you have the 28 tied to Nickel with the 57. And there's the 57. This means Devil's Copper. Because we're the devil. We end up coming down here and becoming physical people. And we become the devil. You're your own devil in this game. And life's a big contradiction. But there's that scene in the sinks. And did they sit down with Pi when they coded? I mean, this means gold currency, 44, of course. That means gold currency, and we're being mined for our energetic gold. But did they sit down and sync this with Pi because they knew the 57 appears at that 404th decimal digit of Pi? And of course, it lands right on that number five. And I said, five is boron, five is man. That's what it's telling us. Even though the seven follows the five, the five means man. That's boron. We are boron. We are man. We are the number five. We are nickel. What's a five cent piece? It's, made, it's nickel. It's nickel. And it's right there, folks. You can't miss this. This is what the story is. This is how tightly woven this code is in our reality. So here's another scene I wanted to show you and give you an example of how deep this code goes and how easy it is to see it once you see it and you can't unsee it. So Bill Murray realizes that his life is not his own and he's like repeating the days. So he goes to the bar and he's hanging out with these guys, he's drinking and these two guys get completely smashed. He's at the bowling alley. That has other significance as well. But he's at the bowling alley, gets, he's, he's just drinking coffee. They're getting completely smashed. And then he decides to drive with them and it makes them slide over. And he's moving in the driver's seat. And of course, this is the license plate that was on the car as they drove away. They made sure that th this was shown. And so, of course, I'm going to decode the license plate. And look at what it ends up becoming, folks. It's ZQR5S8, and there is the decode on that. 26, of course, means the G-O-D. It's God. God equals 26. It's the element iron, as in the yod heh vah -Heh. It came out in the Iron Age. But what the clues that I got was right here. It's the 10 and the 16, because they're broken up. And what is 10 and 16? It's the man in hell. That's what this means. This is showing you that this guy, Bill Murray, repeating his life over and over, is a man stuck in hell. It's exactly what this license plate means. Let me go a little bit further, further so to support what I'm showing you right here. Now, he ends up driving down the road, and now he doesn't give a shit about what he does. He thinks that whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm going to repeat the same things over again. So I'm going to have a little fun with this. So the co a cop starts to chase him and he decides to drive on the railroad tracks. As of course, he's driving down the railroad tracks, a, a train approaches. And he swerves right out of the way before that train hits them. And just in the nick of time, 
And the train, as you notice in the background, the number is 6244. Now, I want you to understand something, folks, or understand something. Do you realize what would have to go into actually then choosing the train and the number? I mean, it's, is it that easy to come by to pick out whatever kind of train you want and put the number on there? Or they, are they sticking the number on the train because they consciously know that's the number they want, have you, they want you to see as the train goes by? Because which one could it be? Or could it just be that they just randomly picked any train and it just had that number on there and this is the code showing itself? You gotta be the judge on that, folks. In my opinion, man's not doing it. But nonetheless, what does this 6244 mean? Well, when you break it down, this is the actual scene of the train coming at them head on as they're driving down the tracks. And it's got 6244, not once, but twice. Not once, but twice. 6244 is the number 16. And of course, I showed with the license plate, the word hell equals the number 16. How about that, folks? So again, if you watch the movie, the 6244 is completely on the train. And are the producers actually choosing the number of the train for the scene? Do they, do they get to pick the train? as it came down the tracks at nighttime when they were shooting this scene? Was that really consciously going on? Because there it is, it's hell. 6244 means hell. When you go right back to the license plate, it means the man in hell, folks. You can't miss it once you see this, this code. You cannot miss it. And we're talking about Groundhog Day. So the 6244, of course, is twice that would be 16 plus 16, and that gives us the number 32. So now we can go to another layer, folks, and show you just how detailed, how mathematically precise this code is that we're seeing in this movie called Groundhog Day. This one, it just blows me away. So we go back, we have 32, I'm sorry, we have 16 twice, 6244 twice, there it is. It means hell. It's on the license plate, man in hell. But it, 16 plus 16 equals 32, which is this element right here called germanium. Now, germanium has several weights. This is its average atomic weight, 72.630. This got its, word, its name from Germania, which is Germany. Germania equals the number 22. That's, of course, tied to titanium and the tetragrammaton, and titanium is Saturn's moon, Titan. But more importantly, it's linked to this element right here called sodium, because sodium has an atomic weight of 22.99. Sodium is 11. 11 becomes man, becomes tied to Yaldabaoth, and the number 24. But more importantly, sodium... You know that statement, Jesus said, ye are the salt of the earth. Yeah, no kidding, because man is the salt of the earth. We all have sodium inside of our bodies, but this is where sodium got its name from. It's called soda. Soda equals 15, and what's the 15th card in the tarot? The devil. So you can clearly see, folks, that when we go down into hell, we become physical matter, because you see, 32 is a very special number because that is where liquid water turns to ice. It slows down and becomes a different aspect of water. 33 degrees means ascension, and it means when water turns into a liquid state. 32, completely opposite. It turns into a physical state called ice cubes, which denotes moving down into Groundhog Day, becoming man, becoming the devil. Well, this is who we become, folks, the devil. The devil equals 33, by the way, and that leads to ascension. This card right here, the symbolism is, you know, the chains are around your neck and you got to just take the chains off. That's what this means. No more bondage when you see the code. So clearly you can see that this train right here is indicating duality. It's indicating hell. We are in hell, folks. Make no mistake about it. That is exactly what we're in, is hell. I mean, if you've never seen the show The Good Place, you should check it out. There's a lot of truth in that show. 
But there's the breakdown of 32, 32 degrees, meaning physicality, duality. We become salt of the earth, sodium becomes soda, soda's 15, we become our own devils down here in duality. We get stuck down here in Groundhog Day. And, you know, Groundhog Day, Groundhog is 42. And that's a match of these big words on the world stage. Reincarnation, 42. Crucifixion, 42. Trojan Horse, 42. If you've seen The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, what was the special number from the supercomputer? 42. 42, folks, is a huge number. It leads to the number six, which leads to carbon. Even the word day is the number six. When you look at groundhog itself, ground, think about the word. It's ground, you're grounded, and then you become a hog. Look at what hog is, folks. It's 15 again. It's the devil. It's the ground devil. That's what this means. Ground hog is ground devil. And 27, as we know, is the word current or currency we become currency we become energetic currency down here in duality as we become currency devils that's what we become we become this the currency devil which is jesus and lucifer currency devil it's exactly what this means groundhog and being stuck down here in duality and turning into physical matter we become human beings salt and we become currency devils that's how this game works and the reincarnation and all that stuff if you believe in those stories of course no one can prove it whether it exists or whether it doesn't but we're going to get into duality now folks let's let's get into this topic duality i showed this on one of my social media posts as one of the sneak peeks of Groundhog Day and I found this and they had worked it out and it was 33 years and 350 days. How many times did he relive Groundhog Day? This is what this said. I just found this. I didn't do the math myself, but I thought it was really interesting. Now, they did this to mark the film's 20th anniversary. 20th, what's 20? Do I, Why would you do it on the 20th anniversary? Do you think the people that actually work these numbers out they knew that duality equaled 20. i mean folks you have to start thinking common sense and logic they would have to all the people would have to be in on the conspiracy if this was a big because if, if people are really being mocked and they're just trying to pull the woolly over your eyes and all stuff you, you'd have people that 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 are working these jobs and it's like are they really here to try to screw you over and try to pull the woolly over your eyes are they all in on the conspiracy you got to think about that so this came out in the film's 20th anniversary, and of course, they did the, the, the numbers, 333 years and 350, there it is, repeating the same day 12,395 times. That equals the number 20. How, how, what do you think the odds would be that it would be 20? Of course, 12 is carbon. That the, this is the code showing itself. 12,012 is carbon, linked to the number six, linked to the word day. And there it is. It's, it's duality, folks. I mean, your jaw should be on the floor already, but this is, here it is. This is the scene when he looks over at the clock and it turns 6 a.m. That's carbon. That's him waking up and realizing, hey, I'm a man. Because when you're asleep, it's in a different state of mind. You're in a different state of mind when you're asleep versus awake. But there it is, carbon six. And it becomes that. We become the hangman, folks. That's what this code is telling you. That's why people that say the tarot is from the devil, that, they, that's an ignorant statement. It has nothing to do with that. Not in this, the context that people are saying it as. These have every bit of merit as any any other things that are on the world stage that have to do with decoding our reality and telling us exactly how all this game works. There it is, carbon moving into the hangman. 
So now let's get into our second topic, Cherry Street, because this is the location of where uh, Bill Murray was sleeping and would wake up with this alarm clock every single morning. It was Cherry Street. It's actually a real location, and it's a bed and breakfast. It's 344 Fremont Street in Woodstock, Illinois. That's where they filmed this movie primarily is in Illinois. And there is a real bed and breakfast. You can go Google this and check it out. I did some research on it, but here it is. Here's him coming out of the bed and breakfast, 344 Fremont Street, and it's the Cherry Street Inn. And when you do the numeral, <laughs> when you do the numeral, this is, I'm gonna probably laugh a lot during this decode, folks, so don't mind me. I just had a lot of fun with this. But when you do the, the numerology of the total address, saying all the words out, not abbreviating them, you get the number 159, the subtleties, of course, 30 letters, 30 E's is linked to the Demiurge and the rabbit card going down the rabbit hole and Jehovah and Santa Claus and Nazareth, like Jesus of Nazareth. Those all link to the number 30. It's the element zinc and all that kind of stuff. But the 159, where is that found in the string of pi? Well, here is the first five numbers. Now, remember, five means man. Just remember that, 5.59 to 6 a.m., it means man. And uh, the first five digits past the three-point is 14159. And there it is. It's, I highlighted it in yellow. The full address in numerology of where Phil Connors or Bill Murray stayed in the movie Groundhog Day, and he kept waking up and reliving the same day over, is 159, and that's where it's located. And when you add these digits up, folks, look at what you get. Now remember, this is the location that the producers and directors chose. And if they were consciously doing this and coding this, they would have to actually sit down with this exact cipher and label it all out. And they would have to pick it based upon this right here for this expression to match up, which I think is absolutely ludicrous thinking. Man is being used to display the code and act it out. This is a perfect example. So there it is, 14159, where this 159 comes into play is the number 20, which is linked to the words duality. And if you haven't seen my decode on down in a hole, which is all linked to Alice in Wonderland, the word hole equals the number 20. We all fell down the hole down here into Wonderland. How about that, folks? Can you see the code now? Can you see it? It's right there. You can't miss it, folks. This is the code. This is how tightly woven this code was designed. So here's the bio of the movie. And of course, I have two things circled. The full timestamp of the movie, one hour and 41 minutes. What is 141? That's pi, folks. I can see man consciously doing that. But again, you realize what would have to go into stuff like that to get everything sliced and diced. I mean, I know you get, it's possible, but that's basic stuff, I think. But the more, you know, the more detailed stuff like this, this the, to get this in line like this, to me, it would be absolutely, it just doesn't make sense to me how man could be doing this. That's just my opinion. But I'm going to keep going and showing you more to support my opinion and what I'm showing here. So the initial release of this movie, the second circle is February 12th, which is 212. We could decode that. But here's the card that is linked because you know I'm going to weigh it against the cards. Here's the card that lands on February 12th. It's the King Diamonds card. And let me show you that. Here we go. Here is the boilerplate chart for the cards of illumination. Of course, I've shown this so many times, the 12 months running across the top and the 31 days running along the side. And February 12th, there it is. It's the King Diamonds card. The King Diamonds card is the 39th card in the deck. There it is. 39th. If you want these graphics, by the way, just send me an email and I'll say, I've sent them to a lot of people. My email is decodeyourreality at gmail.com and just pay it forward. If you find some decodes, just, you know, pay it forward to people. That's all. But there it is, folks. It's the King Diamonds card. The King Diamonds card is the 39th card in the deck tied to the release date of this movie. And we're going to show, I'm going to show that a little bit more once we get to another topic. But nonetheless, folks, here is, <laughs> I think I got this one out of, oh no, I don't. But here is Bill Murray 
smashing down on the alarm clock. I think this was like the third time, the third day he realized, or fourth day, or I don't remember how many days he's in, but he gets pissed off and he ends up smashing the alarm clock a few times. This is one of the scenes right here. And at the 6 a.m. again, you know, when you really look at um, the string of pie, folks, with this 600, this is again, so this is another layer, folks, that uh, would have to get coded into this movie. But I looked into the string of pi and that 600, the 600, it's located at the 359th decimal digit of pi. And of course, I'm going to weigh that against the number empire.com and look at what if it's a prime number. And of course, sure as hell is, it's not just any prime number, but it's the 72nd prime number. And what's 72, folks? It means... 32, which is hell, germanium, 32. I went over this. Now, this is another layer that I'm bringing in here because I wanted to give you a little bit more of an advanced look at what this 6 a.m. means. And remember, 6 a.m. means moving into carbon, moving into physical form. And that's what pi is telling us linked to the prime number of 359 in the 72. It's, it's right here. It, it, germanium is that 32nd element. And then when we bring in another layer into all this, we bring in the 32nd card of the medicine deck. There are 52 cards in this deck. And then instead of using symbols and card suits. It uses insects, animals, reptiles, and so on. And it just so happens that the 32nd card is the ant card. And, you know, the word ant, folks, is the same as the word man. There it is in the dead center. The word man is the number 10, and the word ant is the number 10. And you'll notice that the, the numbers individually, man is a 415, ant is a 154. It's completely an identical match identical. So when you go outside and you are walking around and there are a ton of ants underneath your feet and you're constantly stepping on them and killing them, those ants have families as well. And we're constantly killing things without even consciously knowing that. But that's what we're doing. We're unconsciously killing things. And the ant was a representation of our microcosm because mankind would be the ant on the macro level. Well, what would be our macro level when we become the micro level? If you really kind of use your common sense and logic and realize that outside of our reality, there's something beyond us and it's using us to play out this game. You know, ants are hard workers. Man is hard working. But when you go back and you realize that the 359, which is linked to the 600 and the alarm clock that goes off when it tells Bill Murray that he has to relive his day over as man because he wakes up from a different state into physical carbon. We become the ant, folks, as we end up getting stuck down here in hell. Remember the train with the 32? It's all linked together. There's the 72 and there's the 359. And it really comes down to this word right here, because you see germanium, folks. Germanium is linked to the transistor. Right here, when you look at germanium, this is the photograph that they use, the icon they used to represent this element. And when you go down and you look at it, it says right here, germanium was used in early transistors similar to the one featured here. What is a transistor? What is a transistor, folks? Folks, it's right there. We, as human beings, we become a transistor. A transistor is just a conductor of electricity. Mankind is a conductor of electricity. We are transistors. We're moving into the transhumanism stage. Trans, transfer of energy. Folks, this is how the code works. This is how mathematically precise this code is. That Groundhog Day talking about man reliving over its day over and over again is us as mankind. And perhaps it's describing reincarnation where we never get out of this game. Of course, the story in Groundhog Day is Bill Murray just has to become a good person. And then he finally dies and doesn't have to relive through the day again. That doesn't, that's not the way it works for us. 
But nonetheless, the story is, folks, we become carbon, we become ants, and we're down here in hell, and we become, we're transistors. We are conductors of energy, electricity. If you go, just, if you go and research the word transistor, I'm going to suggest that you do that. Go common, use common sense and logic with the word transistor, folks. That is exactly what we are. We are transistors. This is a transistor right here. Looks a heck of a lot like a man in a lot of senses. But that's what this code is telling you. We become the ant. Of course, there's that movie Ant-Man. I could probably decode that. And we move into time, folks. Time. I mean, if you look at the 415 in man and ants, they both share that 154415. Well, there it is. The 145 is in the IME. The only difference is this letter right there with the letter T. And what is T? T is not only the number four, but when you go and look at it on the one through 26, it's the 20th letter. And what's 20? It is duality, folks. So the letter T, which is linked to time, this is called the capstone of numerology. That's why this is advanced decoding, folks. Can't just put words to numbers and think you got it all figured out, folks. There are so many different layers, and the more layers you know, the easier it becomes to see this code, and then you can become more and more detailed at what you finally make the truth as your own. But T is regarding time. And it's the letter, the number 20, which means duality. There it is, duality. So we are the time gods of duality. Time and God both equal 14. Satan equals 14. And we become transistors down here and we live out Groundhog Day. So let's get into the other topic now called the frozen fool because that's what we become. This, is, gets, this gets really interesting, folks. So this is a repeating aspect of this decode. It was with the train that almost hit him in one of the scenes. This is hell twice. 16 and 16 is 32. And 32 degrees Fahrenheit is when ice, a water turns to a solid. When you convert that into Celsius, it's zero degrees. What's the zero card in the tarot? It's the freaking fool card. So when you use your common sense and logic, folks, and you syncretize all this information, clearly you can see that we become the fool and we have to come down here in hell as we move into physical matter and we live out our lives down here in, on earth. We become the fool, the zero. Found from just a simple conversion of Fahrenheit to Celsius and the representation of liquid to solid the fool water to a solid that's exactly what happens we become the frozen fool so of course you know where is that it located in the string of pi between 32 and 33 well 33 folks is located at position number two 33 is which two means duality 33 is ascension matter of fact if you look at this There it is. Ascension is 33. It's right there. Can't miss it. So it's tied to the 28. But what I wanted to point out to you, ladies and gentlemen, is 33 is the number two. Let me zoom in on this. 33, the 33rd digit is the number two. And the 32nd digit is zero. What was duality again, folks? It's 20. It's just reversed, but there's, there's the 20. You, you can't miss it. Spots 33 and 32 is the zero and the two. 32 is the zero as we go down in and we become that frozen fool. Right there, the zero. We become the fool as we go down into 32. The 32nd spot is the zero right there. Become the fool, folks. We become the frozen fool. And here's another representation of how I can show support again with ironclad convincing evidence that man is completely being used. Here's a perfect example. You know this guy, 
goes by Ice Cube. His name's O'Shea Jackson. <laughs> but but his, here, here's, his, here's his birthday. Now, do you think this guy's trying to mock you? Ask yourself that question, folks. You got to have fun with this. But O'Shea Jackson, otherwise known as Ice Cube, born on June 15th. Here's his card, folks. <laughs> here's Ice Cube's card. It's the Two Diamonds card. And the Two Diamonds card is right here, folks. It's the 28th card in the deck. And uh, when you go and look, I mean, there is the 32 and 33. I mean, it's right there. And we're talking about the ice cube being the separation point between the zero and the two, the 33 and 32 degrees. And this guy goes by ice cube tied to that 33 and 32 folks. I mean, what do you think the odds would be? And do you think this guy's trying to mock you? Clearly not folks. The guy got his name Ice Cube. I don't know how he actually got it or who gave it to him. Maybe he made it up, but your mind's not your own. So if he came up with the name, the very reason why he came up with this name is because it's, it's part of his code. Clearly you can see it. It's part of his freaking code. It's part of his code. I mean, two means duality. It's part of his code, folks. Ice Cube, the frozen fool. We're all the fool stuck down here in hell at 32 degrees. It's exactly what this is telling us. We're stuck down here in Groundhog Day. And this is just funny. This is just proof that man's not coding this. They're just, they're just not. I mean, here's a, here's, a, uh, uh, here's a snapshot of the movie and Bill Murray's walking past an ice sculpture. Think about it, folks. In the movie itself, he actually is an, he becomes an ice sculptor. He's sculpting ice, figures out of ice. Ice men, ice sculptors, think about what this movie's telling you, folks. And do they consciously know this, being the frozen fool down here in hell, reliving out our days over and over? And is this what reincarnation is all about? So the song that was continually playing after that alarm clock went off each and every time, was the song I Got You Babe by um, Sonny and Cher. And what's funny about it is, is the title of the song is a 39, folks. And that's a match of the actual day this movie came out. February 12th is the King Diamonds card, and that's the 39th card. And then the song that was a big part of the movie because it kept repeating over and over is also the number 39. I mean, what do you think the odds would be of that, folks? And again, clearly you can see I'm just using the Chaldean. I'm not even deviating away and using other ciphers. Makes it much easier. It gives you more opportunities. I'm not doing that. I'm just showing you one. And yet here we are showing you how this code is expressing itself. So let's break down I Got You Babe, shall we? So the 39 is tied to the numerology of the title of the song, tied to the card that is the release date of Groundhog Day, a complete match. And of course, the, um, the length of the song is three minutes and 11 seconds. What's the 311? It's the 64th freaking prime number. What is 64 tied to? It's the GD element, Catalinium. And of course this is, they used to make this to make television screens, television. The 157 of course is tied to the 37, which is the Jack in the box card. Folks, it just keeps going. Now again, this song came out in 1965. And then this movie came out in 1993. The, they decided to use this song as the song that would play to wake the guy up. But I mean, folks, do you see, how do you sync this up? This was created in 1965. But this is, you see how the code's showing itself? Folks, this would be impossible, absolutely impossible for the creators of the movie to go with this level. They, this is like getting lucky here. I mean, okay, maybe you're sitting down and saying, well, we got to pick a song and it's got to equal 39 because, you know, the, the movie's going to be released on the... February 12th, which is going to be the 39th card. And I don't even know if they decide they're going to pick these things out on exactly these days. I mean, there are, you know, delays in movies. I mean, I know what goes into movie, the movie business folks, and they have a projected date, but not everything always goes perfect. 
So how about that, folks? The song that plays over and over to wake Bill Murray up from his slumber is a direct match of the release date of the movie, the 39. And of course, the 311 tied to the GD element. How about that, folks? The release date is July 9th, 1965. Of course, I'm going to go check that out. Look at where July 9th is. Not only is July 9th, 79, that's gold as in gold currency, but it's the 190 and 191st with leap years on the Gregorian calendar. Of course, folks, the 190 and 191 is tied to this element right here called Osmium, otherwise known as the Wizard of Oz. That's what runs this reality, by the way. And you probably saw this in my decode of They Live, tied to the number 54, which is where they were broadcasting the signal to hypnotize people. So another layer that has absolutely nothing to do with Groundhog Day, but it has everything to do with Groundhog Day, showing you the code of what's running this. Man is not running it. Man is just acting out the code. So what about Sonny Bono, the guy who wrote the song? His full birth name was Salvatore Philip Sonny Bono. Of course, there's, it's funny because there's the fill there. Subtleties, right? He was born on February 16th, 1935. So February 16th is also written 2 slash 16 or 2.16 or just 2.16. And look at where it's found in the string of pie, folks. It's directly tied to the number 344. Do you know the address of where Bill Murray stayed at? Called the Cherry Street Inn, 344 Fremont Street. Folks, again, do you think man could ever sit down and code this? I'll give you an answer, no freaking way. Not at this level, folks. This is, this is mind-blowing decoding right here. This code is so mathematically precise. Something that was designed and coming out in 1965 and then placed inside of a movie that come out in 1993. And yet here we are and, and, and syncing it with a place that really exists in Woodstock, Illinois. And yet here we are syncretizing all of these layers and showing you how detailed this code is. Keep in mind, February 16th, 216. 216 is the divine triangle. If you know what the divine is tied to the 46th problem of Euclid, the 345, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. It's all tied together if you know those layers. That would be another layer we can bring into all this. So let's get into Bill Murray meets Lucifer, because Lucifer has so much to do with this decode, folks. This is this is <laughs> this is where it gets really funny, folks. I just I don't know what else. To <laughs> okay, so uh, Bill Murray's full name is William James Murray, and he was born on September twenty first, nineteen fifty. The September twenty first card is the three clubs card. So let me show you September 21st. Here's September. And then you come down to the 21st. There's the 21st. And there it is. It's the three clubs card. Let me zoom out of there. So there it is. September 21st is the three clubs card. The three clubs card is the 16th card in the deck. Remember, you remember what the number 16 equals, right folks? The three clubs card. Yeah, it, 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 leads to, it leads to the word hell. And <laughs> what is Bill Murray experiencing at the first onset of him waking up a few times? He starts to panic. He starts to stress out. I mean, it, it just becomes extremely comical when he wakes up and realizes like, man, I'm reliving. I'm having all these problems. He goes to a psychiatrist. He's having all these issues. And uh, this is just so funny, folks. I mean, what are the odds that this guy, Bill Murray, he was in a family of eight, by the way. I'm going to get into his household address here in a second to show you some more things. But I mean, folks, he's in hell. The guy has the hell card. Born on September 21st. And so, you know, this 16th card, it's, it's just funny because what is he in? In this movie, he's, he's, he's in hell. In Groundhog Day. And it's just, it's just so funny, folks. When you go, you know, even further with this, you realize 
that this guy right here that they casted to play Lucifer, his name's Thomas John Ellis. He was born on November 17th, 1978. His card as well is that 16th Hell Three of Clubs card. You go here to the November 17th. November and you go down to the number 17 and there it is. It's the three clubs card. That's Thomas John Ellis folks They casted to play Lucifer and his card is a direct match of Bill Murray's birth card and Bill Murray's playing Groundhog Day living in hell and uh, of course Lucifer is the character Lucifer who's Living in hell as well. It's just funny folks when you see the sinks like this you know, you have to ask yourself, I mean, are they are they fudging on Bill Murray's birth, on his birthday, you know? I mean, is that what's going on to mock you? To make sure you get it right to this 16th card, folks. I mean, it's just ludicrous thinking. But it's just really funny that Bill Murray has is, is got the hell card and so does Thomas John Ellis. And remember, Jesus' twin brother's name is Thomas. John, Jesus and Thomas. It's just hilarious, folks, this code. And so, you know, whatever created this code's got one hell of a sense of humor. So, so let's keep going. Let's break down um, Bill Murray's alchemology. And if you're new to that, alchemology is taking the numerology of uh, the words and then bringing in the elements of the periodic table and matching up the numbers. So William, for example, I just did William because there's so many elements and I wouldn't be able to fit them on the page here, but William is a 613314. And when you match that up with the elements, it's carbon, hydrogen, lithium twice, two more hydrogens in a beryllium. So 6133114, it's a match. And when you do all his entire name using the trusty calculator, couldn't fit it on there as well, but go ahead and fact check that. You're gonna get the number 98.158. And it's really interesting that it's 98.158 because when you go into the string of pi, the 98 appears at the 80th decimal digit occupies two spaces 80 and 81 of course 80 plus 81 is the golden ratio 161 but more importantly folks that 98 tied to the 80 and 81 is tied to the two trees that are biblically talked about in the old testament from the torah it's the tree of life and tree of knowledge and i showed earlier in the movie the timestamps and the 5.59 turning to 6 a.m. and showing you the 46 and 47. Well, when you add in the word tree to the tree of life and tree of knowledge, the 46 and 47 become the 80 and the 81. And that's our DNA, folks. I have a decode coming out on Jacob's Ladder. But it's this is our DNA. This is the tree of life and tree of knowledge, our DNA. And it's freaking tied to William James's Murray's alchemology. And this is, you know, alchemology is so very accurate. You should know what your alchemology is. I showed you why Keanu Reeves was called Neo in my decode of John Wick. But nonetheless, folks, this is just hilarious that he plays this guy living out a day continuously the same one over and over. He's in hell, but he's living out the tree of life and tree of knowledge, which is our double helix, our DNA. And it's tied right to his alchemology. It's just kind of funny. So uh, William James Murray, when you do the straight up numerology is uh, the number 49. That's linked to the words down in a hole. I did that through my decode of down in a hole. I showed um, that's tied to Alice in Wonderland. And of course the 49 through the string of pi, it lands at the 57th decimal digit of pi. And that's really fascinating because you see Thomas John Ellis's total name numerology is that 57. So you you can clearly see that a completely separate character playing in a completely separate show born at a completely separate time on the calendar having a completely separate name and separate birthday still the the, the code is showing that we are all lucifer we're all the devil stuck down here playing out our parts in groundhog day thomas john ellis being the 57 tied to that number 49 and then bill murray having the 49 tied to the 57 and his birth card is exactly the same as thomas john ellis folks i mean you can't make this stuff up really 
Two separate people, two separate shows slash movies, two separate lives, two separate families, two separate places of birth, yet we're able to sit here and syncretize not just anything but showing the word hell and uh, the Groundhog Day and then, of course, Lucifer playing out hell. And it's just really funny to me, folks. And again, proving, proving with ironclad and convincing evidence that man is just being you. We're just being used. So just enjoy the ride, folks. And of course, know your code. Know what your code looks like. That's why, you know, d- d- watching my decode, how to decode yourself. And if you want to get a reading, get a reading from me or somebody else. But know your code as much as possible. Because this is what it looks like. I mean, here's another layer. Here's Thomas John Ellis's um, alchemology. We did Bill Murray's. Here's Thomas John Ellis's alchemology. I just did his first name because, again, there's so many letters in here. But here's Thomas right here matching the letters and numbers to the word Thomas. And when you go over and you add up the entire elements on the periodic table, all Thomas John Ellis, all of these, using the trusty calculator, you get the number 121.154. The 121 is tied to this element right here called antimony which is tied to the all-seeing eye when you go when you go to the um the elements of the periodic table and you look at this 51st element here's antimony here's what the royal society of chemistry decided to use for their little icon it's the all-seeing eye of horus and that's because in the uses and properties it'll tell you that the ancient egyptians they used to put it under their eyes as mascara, you know, darken their eyes, which is really interesting. What do they do on a football field? You put that black line under your eyes. It's kind of interesting, but his name equals the all-seeing eye, antimony. And of course, when you do the syncretization of the words antimony and Lucifer, who's the character that he plays, they both equal the number freaking 28. I mean, folks, what are the odds of that being? Do you see what I'm saying? Man could never code this. And then, of course, the 28th element is nickel. That's tied to devil's copper. That's what it means. Old Saint Nick. Old Saint Nick is Santa Claus. It's all tied together, folks. All of it. We become the devil when we come down here in Groundhog Day. So here, here's, the, um, <laughs> here's, <laughs> here's the physical address of the home that Bill Murray grew up in. 1930 Elmwood Ave, Wilmot, Illinois, 60091. So I went ahead and I looked up the latitude, longitude. Folks, you can do that by, do I even have the website open? Here it is. You can go to this website called latlong.net. You can type in any, here's my address that I'm staying at here in Mexico, but you can type in any address and it'll give you the latitude, longitude. And you should know where you're staying at right now, where you were born, the, the, the city you were born in, the, the hospital that you were born in, any address. And here's Bill Murray's home address that he was raised in. With he was, uh, he had, They had eight kids living in this small house. And it's funny because, you know, the latitude's 42. And if you know what the 42nd element is, it's, it's molybdenum, which means lead, as in turning lead into gold. But when you add up the latitude longitude using the numerology cipher, it gives you 51, which is freaking antimony, which is Thomas John Ellis's alchemology. And they're tied together with their births, folks. I mean, how, how, do, you, how do you wrap your mind around this, folks? How, how do you wrap your mind around this? Seeing that they both have the same birth cards, which leads to the word hell. And he's playing out this hellish life in Groundhog Day. Lucifer plays out. He's the ruler of hell. You know, I mean, we are the devil, folks. They we're in hell. We're living out Groundhog Day. It's just they're all tied together, folks. This is so funny if you ask me. And his latitude, longitude of the home he was raised in is linked to antimony and the all-seeing eye, which is Thomas John Ellis's alchemology. Man, are you freaking kidding me? I mean, what are the odds? So, you know, here's the actual map of Bill Murray's home. Here it is. Childhood home of Bill Murray, 1930 Elmwood Ave. And it's right across, of course, it's right across from (laughs) this right here. To put icing on the cake, it could even decode that. It's just funny. It's just really funny. And, uh, you know, what about the 1930? Well, look at where it appears in the string of pie. Not just any place. Not just any spot, folks, but the 1930 appears at the 3,030th 
decimal digit there's that freaking 33 and it's just it's just hilarious folks it just keeps going on and on and on and it leads right into the whole point of this decode is is fill the groundhog because this really happens every february 2nd in pennsylvania punxsutawney Pennsylvania, they have Groundhog Day, and it tells whether or not we're going to have six more weeks of winter or not. And it's all about the groundhog observing its shadow. If you use your common sense and logic on that story and how it wraps into all this, it, it's, it's observing its shadow it has a lot of significance to it. But, you know, February 2nd is the 33rd day of the year. What this whole movie is wrapped around and Bill Murray's address from his childhood home in the string of pie has the 33 attached to it. I mean, folks, what are the odds? You, you could clearly see man's not coding this, not at this level. It's not possible. It's just not possible. And, you know, so then we get into Punxsutawney Phil, the groundhog and why Bill Murray was named Phil Connors. But it's all wrapped around this groundhog and, you know, Punxsutawney Phil is, of course, the number 72. Phil is 17. 17 is the Yodei Vahe. 17 is tied to the words life, as in the game of life. I'm going to be coming out with a decode on that. But folks, look at this. Punxsutawney Phil, the groundhog, which is what this whole movie is based on, is a freaking 72 tied to the 32nd element, which is 32 degrees, which is a representation of us becoming physical matter, folks. Are you freaking kidding me? This has nothing to do with mocking you. This has nothing to do with rituals. It's just all part of the code, folks. All of it. And the groundhog fill is linked to the ice cube. And that's a representation of freezing, turning into physical reality from the liquid state, folks. The 33 to 32. And I mean, here's a representation of that. See, germanium has several weights. Let me show you real quick. In the Royal Society of Chemistry, germanium, it's becoming one of my favorite elements to study. But it has a lot of isotopes, things that can be measured in. These are the common ones. But look at what it has, folks. Let me zoom in and show you this. This is absolutely mind-blowing. It has one that's weighed at 69.924. And look at what the abundance is of it. 20.57. What is 57 tied to Lucifer? What is 20? It's duality. It's Lucifer in duality. That's what this means, folks. The subtleties, but when you know and you can see the code, you can clearly see man's not coding this. 69 is the yin-yang. 71 is lutetium. 71 is tied to Lucifer, Lutetium. 27 is ground. Remember the word groundhog, ground? Let me go back to that and show you. Ground, 27. And then hog was 15, the devil. 27 to 15, it's the currency devil. And there it is, 71, 27%. So when you go and syncretize, you see, here's the germanium and it's the 71. It's average is 72, but it's got this 71. And when you syncretize that with numberempire.com, clearly you can see the code, folks. 71 is lutetium. What, how do you spell Lucifer, folks? It starts off with those two letters right there. So does Lucy. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. That's where that comes from. And I'm going to be getting into that in a minute, but 71 is not just any number. It's the freaking 20th prime number tied to this word right there called duality, which is what we're all stuck in duality. We are stuck in duality. We become physical matter. That's what this is telling us as we descend down and we become the devil, the currency devil. That's what this is telling us folks. I mean, even the latitude, longitude of Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania it leads to Holmium, which leads to Santa, which leads to the number 30. But it's look at, look at when you add it up, it equals the number 119. The 119, of course, is the mirror of the 911. Folks, there's so many that lead to the element tin and the alligator. The alligator's down here trying to eat you up. But here's the February 2nd card, folks. 
February 2nd card, which is linked to Punxsutawney Phil and the Groundhog Day, which is celebrated every year. It's the 10 spades card. Let me show you that real quick, just so we can be really transparent. February 2nd, here it is. February 2nd is the 10 spades card. It's the 49th card in the deck. There it is. 49th card in the deck. February 2nd is the 49th card in the deck. It's linked to Groundhog Day, February 2nd. And, you know, that is... Well, let me show you this real quick. 49, just remember what 49 is. Down in a hole. There it is, 49. Down in a hole, folks. Tied to Groundhog Day. Going down in a hole, becoming physical reality through this expression right here and becoming the devil. It's exactly what this is telling us. So this is the name that he goes by in the movie. Phil Connors named after, you know, Phil the Groundhog. That's 49. Notice the last name of Connors, 32. 32 again is tied to germanium, folks, going down into duality. Connors is 32. Phil is 17. 17 is tied to life, the game of life. This is the star card, by the way, in the tarot. But I mean, look at the sinks. Bill Murray is full bird name 49, tied to Phil Connors is 49. It's, you know, the star going down into duality. That's what this means right here, folks. Going down into Groundhog Day. And, you know, when you look at the running time of this movie, it's 101 minutes. I mean, look at what that links to. 26, the G-O-D. 26 prime number. The 101 is that portal. If you go look in the string of pi, it's found at the, the one, the zero is found at the 853rd, 853 is the 88. That's man going down or d the divine going down and becoming man. And it's the beast that rules over us. We have a macro beast and a micro beast. So let's, let's look at both of those because we're going back to the release date of this movie, February 12th. The February 12th card I've already shown is the King Diamonds card, the 39th card in the deck. And it just so happens, folks, you see, in the Old Testament, there's only one, just one, not two, not three, just one scripture in Isaiah 14 verses 12 that actually lists and spells out Lucifer's name. And here is the original spelling of it in the original language that it came out in. It's H-Y-L-L, -L, otherwise known as hell. Kind of interesting and fitting, right? It's the number 39. So here we have another sink. Sinking with Lucifer and Bill Murray and all those other things I've shown you. But clearly it's the 39. And it's tied to the King Diamonds. This, you know, these represent water. The diamonds do. Now, if you transfer them into the tarot, they're going to link into the pentacles, which it means money. But in the card suits, diamonds are water. And spades is earth. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. That's where this all came from. Lucy, Lucifer. And I'm going to show you what this really means. So here's one representation of the 39 tied to the release date of this movie, Groundhog Day. It's the element yttrium, the letter Y, which is tied to our Y chromosome, the X and Y chromosomes. The Y is the 25th letter in the English alphabet, which of course is linked to the words adversary and nine, six and all that kind of stuff. But it's got the 88 tied to it, which is an indication of time travel back to the future. And then, of course, it links to this element right here called potassium. Potassium has several atomic weights. One of them is 39. This is a freaking big deal right here. Because when you synchronize that, first and foremost, we know that the 88 miles an hour, of course, I said this links to back to the future. Now, I want you to use your common sense and logic with this story that was put into this reality that we all play out if this character right here who is now linked to the word satan which just means time god and what is time it's right here the clock it's a huge integral part of this movie it's right on the freaking on the movie page the poster made sure they put the clock in there We're talking about the time god and this 
is talking about only having a short period of time. And then you have the back to the future with the license plate out of time. And they had to get the DeLorean to 88 miles an hour to time travel, to go back to the future, to go back in the past, to teleport. If you haven't seen my decode on Azazel, teleportation. So then you get into the number 19, folks. And this is where I feel that a huge link to Lucifer and the sun are going to stare you right in the face. And it could be, folks, that the reason why Jesus and Lucifer are tied together or Jesus and his twin brother Thomas is because Jesus might indeed be the sun that comes out and goes over the sky and it gives you life. So I, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The sun is the son of God and it rises every day, which is tied to Christmas and all that stuff. But it may be that Lucifer, because the story of Lucifer, folks, is that he came down and weakened the nations. So it could be that, that Jesus is the macro and Lucifer is the micro. And we become Lucifer. We become the devil here. Because see, folks, we are the shadow of the sun. Without the sun, we are nothing. The sun gives us our electricity. It powers up our world. So it could clearly mean, because you see, here is 39 linked to Lucifer, and the 19 is linked to potassium, and the 19th card in the deck of the tarot is the sun card. But you see, when you say the sun, it's going to give you the number 28, which is tied to Lucifer. The original name of potassium, or the reason, I'm not saying the original, but the, the word derived from this word right here called potash. Look at what number it equals in numerology. 28. It's a direct match to the word the sun on this card. The sun's the 19th card. Potassium's the 19th element. Has an atomic weight of 39. And Lucifer's original spelling is 30 freaking 9, which is tied to the King Diamonds card, which is tied to the release date of Groundhog Day. Do you see how all this code is expressing itself, folks? You can't miss it. Tied to time travel. And the magic square of the sun equals the number 666. All the rows, they equal 111, and there's six of them. 666. This is the great beast. It's the beast. The beast in the sky, and then you have the beast on the ground. And we're the beast on the ground. We're Lucifer. We're the devil, folks. It's where all this syncs up. It's what this whole Groundhog Day thing means. This is where Jesus and this twin brother Thomas, Thomas John Ellis, Thomas plays Lucifer, the devil that rules over earth. Jesus rules over the earth from the sky. It's macro to micro. I mean, when you go a step further, folks, you realize, you know, the letter K on potassium, this is what it means in Latin, calium. Calium is 17. The word life is 17. The sun gives us life. Oxygen has several atomic weights. One of the one of the stable is the stable isotopes is 17.999. 17 is life. Folks, what do we breathe? We breathe oxygen. Without oxygen, you're dead. And when you take oxygen into your mouth, it goes down in your lungs and you have what's called respiration. You see, respiration is 39, which is a direct match to the 19th element in potassium, direct match to the word the sun. The sun's a battery. We know that. That's 19. This is, these are all sinks. You can see that. We have to breathe oxygen. The number eight is linked to Thomas, the apostle Thomas, doubting Thomas, the twin brother of Jesus. Jesus is the son. Thomas would be the man. We are all Thomas. We're all, that's why I say we're all the devil. You're your own little devil. Once you become a man here in physical reality, you become a devil. Well, let's now get into the last topic. Now, if you go research these guys and see what their ethnic background is, I'll let you do that in your own time. Seems like everybody in Hollywood 
is all tied to one ethnic background. But nonetheless, you see, Danny Rubin and Harold Ramis, these are the guys who were the main contributors to Groundhog Day. I mean, if you go look at the breakdown of Groundhog Day, here it is. You'll see that it was produced by those, oh, I'm sorry, it was directed by Harold and the screenplay was written by Danny and Harold. They wrote the movie. Whoops. So these two guys are the main two guys in this movie. And Danny Rubin was born on June 3rd, 1957. Harold Ramis was born on November 21st, 1944. 21 is a reduction down to the three. He already has the three. What happens when you bring three and 20 and, 30, and three and three together? You get the 33, you get the crucifixion, you get ascension. One step above the 32. So, of course, naturally, I'm going to bring their cards in, folks. And again, you know, it's like, are these guys coming together because they know what their cards are? Logically, use your common sense on that. So, Danny Rubin, June 3rd, 1957. He's this Ace Spades card. Harold is November 21st. He's the Queen Hearts card. So, the Ace Spades is the 40th card. The Queen Hearts is the 12th card. Based off their birthdays. So naturally, I'm going to look up that in the string of pi and notice that 40 and 12 equals the number 52. 52 in the string of pi is directly tied to this number right there, 82. And what's 82? It's the demiurge. The demiurge tied to these guys' birth cards. When you convert the cards of illumination of their birth cards, the Ace Spades and Queen Hearts in the tarot, it becomes the Ace Sword, Ace of Swords and Queen of Cups. Cups means hearts, spades means swords. This is card 50 and card 48. Here we go, I have this graphic right here. If you want these graphics, again, decode your reality at Gmail and I'll send them to you. Here's card 50. And then we have card number um, 48 right there. Queen of Cups. That's these two guys right here. There are two cards. When you take 50 and 48 and you add it up together, you're going to get the number 98. 98. And that's really interesting because if you remember the alchemology of Bill Murray who played Phil Connors, the main star of this movie, his alchemology is the number 98. How about that, folks? So you see at, this, at these layers when you go really deep, how you can see how it's all connected. The, the, the man could never sit down and code this like this. It's just too many moving parts. It's way too deep. And you would never get anything done in life trying to match up with people. Especially these two guys. You know, going further. Card number 40, card number 12. Bringing in the elements on the periodic table. That's zirconium, which of course that's Yaldabaoth's element. Death and regeneration. And then the magnesium, 12. 40 and 12. When you add up 89.905 and 23.985, get out your calculators, folks. Get out your calculators and add it up. 89.905 and 23.985, you're going to get 113.89. There's that 89 again. 89 is Yaldabaoth, folks. What's 113? It's not just any number. It's the 30th freaking prime number, folks. 30 is tied to these two big titles on the world stage, Demiurge and the New Age name of the Israelite God of the Holy Bible. You can't miss it, folks, right here. And at this layer of decoding, these people are not sitting down and coming together and joining up to make a movie because they know this is part of the code. They're not doing this. I can guarantee you they don't know this. They're not doing it. Too many layers. But yet here we are able to syncretize and show you that man's not coding it. Man is being used to play the code. So here's my last slide, folks. Or second to last slide. And again, it's just, this is where it kind of gets funny. But you see, follow along with me here now. Again, folks, Danny Rubin, born June 3rd. He's the ace spades card. Harold Ramis, November 21st, Queen Hearts card. Card number 12, card number 40. We go then from that into the elements in the periodic table, zirconium and magnesium. 
When you add those up, we did this, it's the 30th prime number, it's 113.89. When you take 113 and you add 89, what do you get, folks? 202. 202. And all you have to do is go back and link it to the day that is associated with the movie itself going right back to Punk Satani Phil and the actual celebration of Groundhog Day. It is the 33rd day of the year. So folks, how about that? The 202 derived from these two guys who created the movie Groundhog Day through their birth cards, linked to their elements, Adding all those up, doing the alchemy of that, and we get the 202. You just drop the zero and you get the 22, and that's February 2nd, which is linked to Groundhog Day, which is what this whole movie is all about. So how about that, folks? That These two guys that created the movie are directly linked to the actual celebration day on February 2nd with that 2 slash 2 and 202 derived from their birthday. But folks, this this level of decoding right here, clearly, you know, what would have to go into these two guys coming together and sitting down and planning it all out and saying, we're going to make a movie because our birth cards are linked to our elements, zirconium and magnesium. And when you do the alchemy of those, they add up to the 113, which of course is the Demiurge and Jehovah and the rabbit card and Santa Claus and Nazareth and all those big names and titles in our reality. And those are going to add up and bring us to the actual day, February 2nd, the celebration of the Groundhog Day. How about that, folks? And uh, we have the Groundhog Day decoded. So folks, what is it you saw during this presentation? I'd love to hear a really long one. What is it you saw during this presentation, folks? A lot of material covered, but I'd love to hear what each and every one of you saw. And clearly you can see, folks, that man's not doing anything. They're just living out the code. So just enjoy the ride. So folks, that's all I got for today. My name is Logan. This is Decode Your Reality. And I thank each and every one of you for your support, your Patreons, your donations, all that kind of stuff. I really appreciate it. Much love to everybody. Until next time, folks, we will see you later.